electric shock, burnt cables, houses on fire, all of these things can be a result of dodgy DIY electrics. So in today's video, we're gonna show you the top 10 DIY mistakes that people make when working on electrics. And I think you'll be surprised by the last one. Let's go. The first DIY mistake that we see quite often as electricians is when people do this. They strip the wire back, take the ends off, to expose the copper, all good so far, and they want to join two wires together. So what do they do? They get the wires and they do the old twisty twisty, twisting the wires together. I've seen it with stranded conductors, I've seen it with copper solid conductors, but the worst is when you try and mix the two. Try to twist solid copper conductors and stranded conductors together. See, I can't even do it. I'm just trying, but I'm just allergic to it. So why do they do this? Well, because they think it's a good solid connection, which to be fair, twisting wires together can be a solid connection, but there are various issues with it. First of all, if you try to twist solid and, and stranded together like that, it never quite sticks together well. Now, some countries they actually put solder on to hold them together. That's an interesting way of doing it. But the issue is, it's very hard then to get them apart. You have to cut all the wires loose and take them apart. So the best way is to connect them using proper wire connectors. In the US, they use what's called uh, wire nuts, which I'm not a big fan of. In the UK, we use Vargo push fit connectors or little snap down connectors or just the traditional screw fit connectors. But you need to connect wires together properly and twisting them together is a big no-no. Another classic faux pas when changing a light fitting is connecting all the reds and blacks together or the blues and browns together. People think that red and red goes together and black and black, but that's not always the case. Sometimes a black wire is actually sleeved as red and it could be a live conductor. And if you put it in together with a live, you're gonna have a big bang or vice versa. Connecting a neutral in with a live conductor can create a big problem. So if you don't know what you're doing, always call an electrician. Our next DIY disaster comes when people try to wire up a plug or connect a cable into some kind of junction box. And we see this a lot. What happens is they do this. So they wire up a plug like this and they leave loads of slack on the wire, on the cable. There we go, lovely juffly. Ah, we won't bother with the cord grip. Just chuck the cover on. There we go, that'll do. What's the problem? This is the problem. The outer sheath of the cable should be inside the plug. It should be secured properly with a cord grip. Because otherwise what happens is you've got all these single insulated wires here which are exposed. They, they can get damaged and there's no secondary layer of protection. This outer sheath rubber, that is what's protecting the cable, the wires within. This is just insulation and that can be easily damaged, exposing bare copper and potentially opening you up to having an electric shock. The other thing is this should be inside the plug because it should be secured by a cord grip. The cord grip goes here and it clamps that on nicely so that if there's any strain on the plug, the wires don't all pull out and cause a short circuit. Now we see this a lot in another situation too. When wiring up a junction box like this, there's two ways that they often do it. They'll either punch a hole in it like that and just shove the wires through. Now, the problem with that is there's no cord grip there, so you can easily pull the wire out. But the other thing that we often see is it's like this, just hanging out of the junction box. Stuff that on the wall, and again, you've got an issue here with no strain relief and exposed single insulated conductors. Not a good idea. So, the best way to do it is to use a compression gland like this. That wires into there. The compression gland tightens up on the outer sheath of the cable. You connect your wires inside the box, put the lid on, and that is not going anywhere. That's how to avoid that DIY disaster. Another classic mistake that people make is plugging in too many extension leads. Let me show you what I mean. We've got an extension lead plugged into this socket. Then from that socket, we've got multiple things running off. Some of the things should be hardwired, but they're not. And then you plug another extension lead into here, run something else. And what happens is you've got a daisy chain of extension leads and unfortunately it can really create the opportunity for overloading the extension lead and catching fire. Another DIY classic that we see a lot is using the wrong size cable. For example, and this is one of the worst ones, wiring lights in bell wire. Now bell wire is designed for exactly what it says, 
wiring up doorbells. It's not designed for any kind of heavy power or voltage. It's just designed for like 12 or 24 volt signals for doorbells. But the amount of times I've seen people wiring up their shed or their loft lights with bell wire is beyond belief. What is the potential danger? Well, if you overload this wire, it will overheat and potentially catch fire. Also, it's only single insulated, there's no outer sheath, so it's easily damaged, exposing bare copper and putting you at risk of electric shock or burns. Now, bell wire is not the only time we see people putting the wrong size cable in. We often see people doing it with twin and earth cable, putting in too small a cable for a cooker circuit or a shower circuit, for example, even upgrading the shower to a more powerful one on the same size cable. We've even seen it with using flex cables to run outside sockets and things like that. There's loads of scenarios where people use the wrong size cable and it can create serious danger. So if you're not sure what size cable to use, always consult an electrician. Another one we see a lot is people installing cables but not clipping them up properly. It's not difficult to clip a cable or put in trunking, but people seem to love just stringing cables along through lofts or on the outside of houses and it's really not safe because somebody could trip or pull it off, it puts strain on the cable cables should be adequately secured. So if you're installing cables, make sure you clip them up. Another classic DIY mistake that a lot of people make is not turning the power off. And that is a fundamental mistake because you put yourself at risk of electric shock and burns. So for example, you know, you're swapping a socket or something. This socket is live. But how do you know it's live? Well, you only know if you've got a proper test device like this. So I'll leave a link in the description below where you can get one of these. But it's very simple to turn off the power. Just find the circuit in the consumer unit, flick it off, and make sure using your voltage testing device that the circuit is dead before you do any electrical work. If the circuit's not dead, then you might be. Another classic mistake that we see DIYers make a lot is tightening wires up too tight or not tightening them up enough. In this terminal block, we want to connect our wire. It's fine, stranded wire, we tighten it up like this. But it's just not tight enough. Over time, what can happen? It, it vibrates because AC current vibrates, comes loose, starts to arc, and it can create a fire. On the other extreme, what we see too, is people over tightening terminals, where they tighten them up as tight as they can possibly get, and it basically cuts through the wire and can damage the wire. In order to know how tight you should do your connections, often a torque screwdriver is recommended, but if you're not able to use a torque screwdriver, best thing to do is just tighten it up to a reasonable degree, not too tight not too loose. And if you're worried that the connection might be loose, the best thing to do is to do the tug test, give it a little pull. If it pulls out, you know it's too loose. Another classic DIY electrical mistake that we see a lot is people stripping the wires back too much. So they strip the outer sheath like that, and then they strip the bare copper like that. Then they bodge the wires into the terminals like so, and they leave lots of bare copper. Now, you might ask what's wrong with this. Well, this is gonna be enclosed in a junction box so nobody can touch these terminals, right? Or maybe this is in the back of a socket or a light fitting or something. Okay, so if it's enclosed, technically there's no life parts exposed, it could be worse. But the issue is, it's just bad, bad practice. Common good practice should be to strip these wires back just enough to make contact with the brass terminals inside. So to avoid this common mistake, it's very simple. All you need to do is follow the instructions in the accessory that you're connecting. Usually they have uh, instructions about how long the wire should be left stripped back, either on the plug top instructions or the light fitting instructions or the accessory instructions. And usually it's a lot less like this. So in this particular case, we just put enough bare copper to get into those terminals and there's no excess copper exposed outside of the terminals. And the final and worst DIY mistake with electrics that I've ever seen is this one. And it's quite a common one. Not unwinding the extension lead fully and plugging something in. What happens if you do that? Let's try it. 
Now one fact that not a lot of people know is that if you're plugging in anything that uses a lot of power to an extension lead, you should uncoil the extension lead fully before plugging in that heavy load. So this extension lead here says that we can plug a maximum of four amps fully wound or 13 amps unwound. And we're gonna plug in this two and a half kilowatt heater, which is about 10 amps and see what happens with it fully wound. So we've turned our heater on at two and a half kilowatts. And what happens basically is we create like an induction coil because this wire is wound up it's gonna create a magnetic field and get very, very hot. Now, whether it catches fire or not, is gonna be down to the design of the extension lead. Have they got any built-in safety precautions or will this burst into flames? Now, I can start to feel the wires are getting very hot. Inductance is starting to build up and a fire hazard is imminent. Well, just as we thought this was about to burst into flames, something happened. The little red button here has clicked it's a thermal overload cutout and what it does is trips out the internal circuit breaker in this plug when it gets too hot. That protects it from catching fire. However, older extension leads that don't have that thermal cutout will burst into flames if you overload them while they're fully coiled up. So this is something you need to be really careful about. And if you're buying a new extension lead, it's definitely worth getting one with a thermal cutout just to avoid mistakes. So that was the 10 biggest mistakes DIYers make with electrics. Let us know all of your worst DIY mistakes in the comments below, or if you're a professional electrician, let us know the worst things you've ever found. I saw one of the worst DIY disasters I've ever seen in my electrical career, and I made a video about it up here. So if you've enjoyed this video, why not settle in and watch another one and like and subscribe. See you soon.